Uh, we don't need any introductions. Everybody knows everybody, right? Right. No. Okay. Good. No. Um, so, Amy, do you want to talk about the filming, or because Jill's on the phone, about the food that built America? Well, Jill's the one that knows more about it because she's been working directly with them. But it's History Channel. Um, they are going to be filming in the Herbert Dunham House Bikini Center uh, October 20th through 29th. I believe they have a setup day on the 17th. Um, they're using the Keeney Center also for their uh, craft service and their you know, holding area. Yeah. And, um, I understand it's a series. I saw some of the episodes last year uh, or last season, whenever that was. Um, so they're going to be filming parts from different episodes in different places. So, so I'm trying to figure, I'm not familiar with the series, so I'm trying to figure out the food that built America. So what, why are oh, they in Weathersfield? They did, um, they did some, last year they had an episode on Hershey, they had an episode I think on Kellogg's, um, um, on Heinz. Um, and I understand that they had wanted to go to Mark Twain, but Mark Twain was way too expensive. Uh -huh. So they came to us. And is it because of the onions? Um, I know. No, I think it's just we have what they need and are not as expensive. Okay. I don't know why they're in Connecticut, but. Um, so are they, go are they going to uh, go into the kitchens in the old houses? They are going to film in the kitchen in the Herba Dunham house. Okay. What's there to see, Amy, at this point, right? What's the see? Of the two rooms, it's only going to be the one with the fireplace and the stove? Well, it's the, the kitchen and the dining room. I understand, and they may be using the smaller parlor as well. So, again, Jill can fill you in a little more detail. Yeah, all right. So when Jill comes back, but, maybe and then they're going to be filming in May classroom as well. They want a school scene. So May classroom obviously is perfect for that. Yeah. So this is the third year in a row. We've had filming in Old Weathersfield in the fall. Oh, no, it's great. Yeah. We keep rolling. Well, and our reputation is growing then that we are easy to work with and it's a good place to come. So, mm-hmm. And it's always in the fall too, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, good. And the scarecrows are up, right? So moving oh, on. They are. 58. Of them, I know, I huge number this year. I wonder if it's because of COVID and so many people were home and had time to actually mm -hmm. create one. I think so. So it made it great. So yeah, and they're staying up longer. Till November. Right, till November, I think, yeah. which I also think is nice. So Peter was just mentioning that it was, you know, unfortunate that there's really no way to quantify how many people are really out there. Oh, during oh. the day, yeah. Yeah, like maybe it's possible next year to have some kids do some counts on on a weekend or something like that. I can tell you it's very busy. There's families everywhere. I know. I, I was really, uh, it was really unbelievable, you know, yeah. the past few days. As Carol said, you can't bike there at all. You got to yeah. walk. Or find parking, you know, yeah. Yeah, but you know, we still have time, Denise, to do that. Mm. I think I mean, Peter was hoping to figure it. out some way to, to do that. Because we still have, I mean, you've got one, two, three, you have four weekends left. So if you think about it, there's no reason why we couldn't see if we could get someone who could do a count either not this coming weekend, but the weekend of the 17th right. to the 24th, just yeah. to get an idea. Yeah, do we, we have a drone? Do we have a drone? No, I mean, we don't have a, we've, we have a person who comes and does some things for us, but I don't know that, I don't know that we could get him scheduled for next weekend. Because that would be a Passover and you'd be able to then count as the Passover oh. went and you could do that like 10 o'clock. Every time that we've had to do that, we have to get clearance from Brainerd 
So it's not uh, something that we do fast. I forget how close we are. Yeah. yeah. Now get some kids uh, to get out there with their with little counters. Uh, so is the so high school if, still if you guys have, have any good ideas, let me know. Yeah, does the high school still have the Weathersfield class? You know, the Weathersfield history class. I I don't believe that they do. They stopped running it. They um, if they still have it, they're not allowed out of the high school. <laughs> To have oh, right right um last year we were sending educators oh, into yeah. the classroom but um i i understood that they were in the process of eliminating that class which is a shame yeah all right so if we want to do a i mean i'm just kind of brainstorming here so what if jesse put something out on it on the facebook post yeah that's about looking for a volunteer a couple of volunteers yeah. who might be willing to just do a simple count. Yep. And I don't know. Oh, we say, could provide them lunch or something like that, or I don't know. Just say like make it eleven to one. Yeah. Two hours just to kind of get an idea. Yeah. Or you could do a gift card to uh, Village. Something. Yeah. Huh? That's a great idea, Judy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so, right, so I, I'll, t I'll touch base with Peter and we'll get something to Jesse and he'll put it out there. Yeah. Actually, uh, they could sit at Village or someplace along there, yep. have their lunch and count. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, another way you might ask the restaurants how many covers they did. They keep track of that, don't they? How many what? Covers. How many customers yeah. they serve? Yeah, I, th I think they they keep track of that. So, you know, say, you know, Village Aroma, uh, Heirloom, Creamery. What type of an increase Charles, are you seeing? Yeah, yeah. You know, how yeah. many? That would be interesting. Okay. Well, we could put the request out to Joe to just ask the shopkeepers to give us an estimate of how many people they've been averaging on the weekend. Yep. But is Village in, in the shopkeepers? I don't think so. I don't think no. so. But. No, so, but Aroma is, Heirloom is, Main Street Creamery is. Charles, is the Charles in there? Uh, are they a member? He's I don't know if they've... Meetings. I think they have a rule, you can't be a member for at least a year if you're, you're oh. busy, be open a year. Oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> He's been coming to the meetings, so I don't yeah. think that's a problem. Uh, but Joe even Grange Crash. Huh? Didn't Joe say there were five new members? I yeah. think I think that they're changing that. I think the reason for the delay, um, I'm not positive, but it was the idea that some businesses would um, come up quick, get a lot of advantages, and go out of business right away. So it was, um, you know, they didn't want to print you in the brochure. <laughs> if, right. Right. If you weren't even going to be there because it was, it, you ended up costing them. Yeah. Um, but I think like some of the new businesses seem like the Charles, you know, seem like like that rule shouldn't apply. Um, but I'm not positive on that. Yeah. So in other words, we may be surprised to learn that they're actually members, even though they're, that rule's been there for a while. All right. Well, I do think that would be helpful to have that idea. And I know it's on the agenda for visitor tracking and counts, but at least if we just, even just an estimate would be helpful for the month of October, what they've been averaging on the weekend. Yep. Um, because then we could use that. Because um, it makes a lot of sense when you are writing grants or asking for information to be able to give that information. Uh, absolutely. All right. Julie, you don't know whether the chambers, I'm just going to keep moving on. Julie, you don't know if the chambers doing the holidays on Maine or if they've made me. I to don't it's believe been so. It's been um, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, you were both talking. <laughs> I said I didn't think so. She said it's canceled. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, all right. And then CCGP grant, Peter's not here to talk about it, but that's really um, improvements on Highland, Wilkett Hill intersection. And do we know 
exactly how the uh, Main Street changes are going, Denise? Do you have an update on that? Um, that was the big grant. We're going to be doing the engineering over the week, or over the winter, um, so we can, you know, get to um, um, you know, right in the spring, be able to go. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, and we talked about the business directory and the kiosk, right? And agreed that we would hold off for a little bit so that we could make sure that we had an up-to-date list before we actually uh, put the kiosk up, that it wasn't going to kill us. And so we're probably looking at doing that in early spring of next year. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been talking about the visitor tracking. Wayfinding signage, Peter and I need to schedule a meeting to do the last stage of signs, which are the directional signs. Um, it's just been, there's been so many things on the planning department's plate that it keeps falling to the bottom. <laughs> uh, but we know we have to get it done. Um, and then the parking study, I haven't been part of any of those meetings. Is anybody here? I'm I'm supposed to be on it and I have not been notified of any meetings, so. Okay. Oh, I don't think there's been any recently. Oh. Hi, Charles. He's getting on. Charles, are you on? They're working on it. Okay. Uh, and the photo contest is going on right now. Um, so, hey, Peter. <laughs> The photo contest, we've, we've gotten some submissions. Um, Ooh, already. And um, so we, we do need to figure out um, the council chambers is being used currently to count ballots. Um, so the day that we had thought about October 29th that the council chambers will be occupied. Um, Peter and I had discussed possibly uh, doing the voting by a Zoom meeting. I don't know what your feeling might be doing the presentation and then just kind of voting by the hand raise over Zoom. Um, I think we can set up Zoom to do polling, can't you? If you set the meeting up ahead of time for yes. polling, yep. um, then and you can, it'll make it easier to do the voting. It'll probably be easier for us to see the photos too. That's always a challenge we have in there with the lighting and everything. Mm -hmm. So we so send it out as a PowerPoint better. ahead of time. Yeah. And you can share your screen. Somebody can share your screen, either yes. Peter or Denise, and then, um, yeah. All right. Because I don't know who else would have equipment to be able to set it up for everybody to sit in the same room. With How about the Keeney? How about the Keeney? I don't know if they have a screen big enough and a projector. Right. 29th well, we're still going to have filming. Great. Which, which date? Uh, what, right now we were thinking October 29th. Yep. No, they're still yeah. here. Yeah, they're still here. Yeah. All right, so let's plan on doing it by Zoom then. Okay. Um, I'm, I have a funny feeling we'll be seeing lots of scarecrows. <laughs> hey, do you want to uh, mention a couple things on that? The yeah. first thing is that we did have a really nice, we had um, Ann Pym's 100th birthday here. And what was fun was there were people um, socially distanced. There was only like 12 people here. But we did put down the big screen with the projector and we did set up a Zoom thing where um, she was able to see people from around the country on the big screen with the projector in, the, in our ballroom. So that is a, a capability that we have for future not the 29th. The, yeah. I did talk to the filming people this morning. I just got off the phone with them bef a few minutes ago. Yeah. And they have changed the dates, which you've probably heard, starting instead of the 17th, starting on the 24th. And the good news is for election day, if they have to go into November, they already have election day as a paid holiday. So we think we can work with them on that. I learned that the... Um, they don't want us to do a lot of publicity about it, if any, until the show actually airs, which is in February. Um, 
but I learned that the um, the foods that they're featuring are Frito Lay, Domino's, White Castle, Caravel, Nabisco, Kraft, and a little more McDonald's. So that's kind of fun. I mean, Carvel is local, right? Wasn't Carvel I think so. a New England company? I believe originally. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the rest. Ask them if they're doing Necco wafers. They should do that. Oh, <laughs> right. Are they still making Necco wafers? I heard they made a comeback, but I'm not positive. Or Pez. <laughs> oh, Pez, which is Pez, here in yeah. Connecticut. Oh yeah. I'm gonna say, ask them about that. Hey, Pez and Necco. <laughs> I mean, Very Pez good. has that cool museum down in yeah Bedford, right? It's like Orange or someplace. Orange, yeah. Orange, my brother-in-law right. works there. Mm. So. All right. So, so nobody talks about the filming because it sounds like it's really going to be very specific anyways and not looking for extras. So, you know, anybody who has, you know, the camera but so sorry, maybe next year. <laughs> um, there was a thing on the Connecticut site like the tourism site where they had um the call for extras and the casting calls and all that so i don't know if it's if they're still looking for people but mm -hmm. it was out there ah. okay all right so peter hi <laughs> we actually are pretty much through the agenda believe it or not because okay. <laughs> you're so fast sounds good to me who's on the on the call today was at the tours at the heritage meeting right so it's kind of uh we just kind of rolled right through um the only thing we did talk about um peter it specifically was kind of the visitor tracking counts and whether jesse could maybe put something out on face the facebook page looking for volunteers and then judy had suggested maybe a gift card to the village um for anybody or any any one of the restaurants around there to um, as a thank you for doing the count. Um, and also to go back to the Shopkeepers Association and ask them if they could just estimate what their average visitor rate was over the four weekends in October. Okay. Does that make sense? Sure. And then next year we should probably plan ahead for a more specific count but at least if we can get someone either on the weekend of the 17th or the 24th to stand out there for two hours and and do a count that'll help yeah okay okay um and you just heard the latest update on the filming yes um and i think was there anything else we have that people needed to talk about um Katie couldn't be on the meeting today for Web Dean Stevens, but I think we talked about all the events that are coming up, right? Um, this is Betty. I just have something about the Academy for the Arts. Oh, um, so our show is up until uh, Sunday, comes down at six o'clock at the end of the day. The artists are picking up their work. So this is a big weekend. It's Columbus Day weekend. And I think um, it's going to be pretty busy over there, um, all along Main Street. And um, yeah. Carol's right. You, you cannot, it, was, it would be dangerous to ride your bike down there. Um, so many people walking back and forth. The, the Scarecrows has kudos to everybody. They were very creative this year, extremely creative and um, positive. You know, there, there were some years that were kind of like on the scary side, but this year it's like, yeah, very creative and very um, based in, um, I think, historical characters and books and literature and stuff like that. So it's really cool. Um, we had a dinner event at the Keeney. Thank you, Jill and Amy, um, for letting us do that. Very limited people, 25 people all together. <laughs> it was COVID protocol. And um, Peter Trippi from Fine Art um, Connoisseur Magazine came and spoke, and he was the adjudicator for the prizes. We had $5,000 worth of prizes. And so if you get a chance to see the artwork, I'll be there tomorrow from 
12 to 4, but we did sell a few pieces of artwork. And um, mm -hmm. from now until Sunday, it's 10% off. We just actually offered something, our portion of it, the Academy's portion of it. Um, and um, we had a jazz event last weekend, which went off really nicely. Because of COVID, we had to limit it, but I think it would have been a huge success. I mean, we would have like really done it extremely well because there was so much interest in it. Um, and going forward, we're offering both um, in-studio classes as well as online classes. Mm -hmm. um, there is there is ownership at stake pretty coming up pretty soon. Peter knows about that, but I can't talk about it right now because it's the board has to discuss it on Tuesday. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. some interesting things happening over there at the north end of town. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be good. We're just going to cross our fingers and, and Thank you. positive thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, definitely. And, um, you know, I, I think we're at a point right now where we can really um, jump and grow and, and um, go out for more grants. Um, the grant situation, Peter's been so good. He, he's been sending me um, arts grants that he sees out there. And um, thank you, Peter. Um, the thing is, the stipulations is what kills me about some of these grants. They just, um, they're very narrow, very specific, um, out, especially outside of Hartford. Um, so yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll talk to whoever wants to talk to me about it. Maybe Amy, you and I should sit down, um, talk about the grant situation. We should just share notes and information on, on what we know. Maybe we should have a grant workshop of some kind for, you know, town purposes because I think we need to go at it together. Mm. That's a that's a good um, a lot of grants do like partnerships. Yeah. They do. And so it would be, you know, if you think Web Dean Stevens, Historical Society, the Academy, um, and there is also the new uh, Hartford Foundation for Public Giving, Weathersfield Advisory Group that has been given $100,000, um, 50 of which goes into basically an endowment. So they have 50,000 to spend um, and they are just gearing up and getting themselves organized. So um, that is one that people should think about and maybe because they haven't decided what their focus is yet. Is it COVID related? It's not. It's really up to the new advisory committee to determine what they want their focus to be. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's really in the very early stages of um, organization. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's 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 butt heads <laughs> on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So. All right, but yeah, no, that kind of makes sense. And then, I don't know, Peter, how difficult would it be to set up a Zoom meeting just to kind of talk about a grant opportunities or the rest of it? You mean uh, just generically or specifically to something? <clears throat> I think, I, I mean, Amy and Betty, I'm gonna rely on you, but it would be, I guess, helpful to say what are some of the typical ones that people apply for or um, and then what are some of the requirements or partnerships where there's an uh, opportunity for collaboration? I it think we can, go ahead. I'm saying it might be handy to um, have Scott Wands um, participate if he has time because uh, CT Humanities has a number of opportunities and some are for very specific things. Right. They have quick grants. Um, that are maximum $5,000 with a 30 day turnaround. But the paperwork is a little tricky. Mm. Right, so I think that all of these organizations are sitting on pockets of money, but they just need to be specific and make sure it reaches a wider community. So if we were to work together, for instance, the Keeney has a lot of space, right? So, and we don't. Um, and we could create, you know, um, uh, programs that would reach across history and, you know, et cetera. Um, I, I think we could work together we, and, um, you know, apply for these grants. For, for, yes? 
because then we would have a wider pool of uh, constituencies because you have a different list than we do. And if we combine them, it would um, reach a, a larger group. Yep. Collaboration, in other words. <laughs> the other thing to keep in mind is most of the grants are matching. Right. Uh, uh, use and, um, assets toward the match. So that always helps. Yes. yes. All right. Uh, that sounds like a good project for uh, the end of the year, um, <clears throat> beginning of 2021, when it's quiet for most mm -hmm. of the organizations anyways, mm -hmm. um, in terms of actual activities. And for most funders, it's also the beginning of the year. So you've got whatever funding availability is 2021. Um, and does the United Way have the directory of grant tour available for people to use? I don't, I don't know that. <clears throat> I do know that Community Foundation of New Britain has it. And so anybody can, in their market can access it, but Weathersfield is not part of their market. Okay. So let's just put that on the tickler for maybe January. That makes sense? Sure. Okay. All right. All right. Anybody else have any, any other business or any other activities or fun things to share? Judy. Yeah, you're on here and I'm on mute now. No, nope, you're good. Now. I'm off. Yeah. Um, EDIC decided not to have the gathering for the salute to business this year, but <clears throat> we talked about possibly doing a video. So each one of the honorees, and we don't have the list yet, but the, each one of the honorees would be on a video to talk about their business or about themselves or whatever. And, um, I, I don't know who's going to see, uh, you know, put it all together, but um, then it would be available to the public. So um, that seems like a good idea for COVID. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think once it's done, uh, Jesse could load it to the Weathersfield YouTube channel. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Am I missing anything, Peter, on that? No, we, we were also yeah. thinking about have, having hiring Jesse to edit it put it together in a final video format. So um, we'll, we'll talk offline uh, with him about that. Chris, the other thing, and we didn't discuss it at the last heritage meeting is that we mm -hmm. have the uh, tourism award that we've been giving sporadically at the Salute to Business. This year, the discussion was um, recognizing slip away river tours and also the um, uh, visitor center uh, project at the Webb Dean Stevens Museum. We thought those are too worthy. Um, if we don't give Webb Dean Stevens the tourism award, we would give him one of the other uh, awards. Um, so we'll have to talk about that at the next meeting. Okay. Well, <clears throat> if you think Slipaway Tours is gonna be one of the um, recipients, then we need to get let them know now to start doing their video before the weather turns, you know? Because they're in the water now, I think. Are they? Actually, they have one more weekend. I thought I saw yeah, them post on Instagram. Yeah, yeah they're getting but ready But they to should wrap have up. a video right now to talk I about mean, their it, business. It makes more sense for us to do Slip Away as the Tourism Award this year because I think you're right. There are kind of other awards through EDIC that could they could get. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. why I said either either or, but I, I think Slipway is more of the tourism and then yep. uh, Webb Dean Stevens is more of a special recognition. Right. Yeah. The only, the only other thing I wanted to mention is I, I got an email yesterday from Trinity Church. They are planning to do a, a photo exhibit on their front lawn the weekend of October 23rd, 24th, and 25th. 
So cool. From one to four in the afternoon. Um, it's related. Uh, it's a, it's a local photographer, but it's related to the uh, Black Lives Matter movement. So just um, just a heads up on that. You said Trinity Church, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where you're already going to have a lot of foot traffic, anyways. I know. I know. So, is that something Jesse can throw up on the Facebook as an event? I, yeah, I already gave it to him. Okay. Yep. Good. All right. <clears throat> All right. So there is no holidays on Maine this year. Um, so I'm thinking this this group probably doesn't need to meet until after the new year. Does that make sense? Okay. It does. Oh, um, uh, Chris, the, yeah. the Academy is doing one thing over Thanksgiving weekend. It's a wreath making workshop. It's a one day, very limited numbers. We could probably do 12 people in that one room. Oh my God, you're going to sell out in no time. <laughs> <laughs> if it's only 12 people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think we need to post it. We'll just go out to our list. Yeah. Uh, but good. Okay. All right, great. Well, good to see everybody again. <laughs> um, so, Peter, yeah, I don't think because there's no holidays on Maine and it's really fairly quiet, um, unless you think we need, the stakeholders need to meet before 2021? I no, I had, I, had it, I had it penciled in for January, so. Okay, perfect. Or even February. Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Um, otherwise, we'll see a bunch of you at the photo judging contest, right, right. on the 29th via Zoom. Right. So we're keeping it same day, same time, and we're going to Zoom yeah. on the 29th. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thank All you. right, everybody. Enjoy the weekend. Bye. It's supposed to be beautiful weather. Yeah. Thank enjoy. you for the updates. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.